Hi, and welcome to another 5-Minute Friday. Today we're going to start talking about tones. I think I want to break this up over multiple parts because there's a little bit to it. I don't want to make it seem like it's complicated. That's not the case. But one of the reasons I want to get started on tones is because they're going to touch on so much about what we talk about with the radios. Tones go by a lot of different names. There's tone guards, code guards, pick lists, you name it. The heading of this page here, Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System, is actually what they are. They're a subaudible tone that acts to tell your radio when to open up and allow you to hear a frequency and tell your radio when to keep closed and not allow you to hear the frequency that's coming into your radio. And that's kind of an important point. I used to describe them as passwords, but that's actually a, probably a poor analogy because anybody can hear them. You don't they're not blocked from hearing those transmissions on those frequencies. And a big reason is why is this here, okay? If you were to program your receive tone to all zeros, and there are a couple ways to achieve this in the radio, you'll hear any transmission on that frequency. It's not like you're blocked from hearing it. A tone is really to your benefit to block out traffic that you don't want to hear. As there are more and more fires that are closer and closer together, there are only so many frequencies to go around, and those frequencies might get doubled up on a nearby fire or even potentially the same fire. Additionally, you can have multiple repeaters all on the same frequency with different tones. So tones should really be seen as a way to expand the capability of a radios, not to block or lock out people from hearing the transmission. That's just, that's just not what they are. So if we look at our example here, we can tell this is a repeated channel because these two frequencies are different. If they were simplex, they'd be the same channel. So let me walk you through this example and I'll draw my little repeater here. Yep, that's, that's a repeater. <laughs> so when you transmit out, you're transmitting out with this set here, transmit, transmit tone. The repeater, if it's programmed correctly, is looking for those two things. And as long as those two things match, you open up the first radio in the repeater. That's right, there are two radios in the repeater. So if the repeater gets that correct uh, transmit frequency and tone, it'll open up the first radio, send your transmission into the second radio and transmit it out with this frequency and this tone. So the transmit, frequency of the repeater is the same as your receive frequency. And that makes sense, right? It has to be the same frequency for you to receive it. And the receive tone that the transmitter is going to send out is that 127.3. And if that matches, your radio will open up and you'll hear the transmission. Does that mean that that transmission that isn't coming in on the frequency on your radio? No, not at all. You can actually tell that you're getting a transmission on your radio because on the top of the old Bendix Kings, the KNGs in the middle, and the newest ones, and even some of the mobiles, you'll see a yellow light, and that's the busy light indicator. It's telling you something is coming in on your radio, but you can't hear it, probably because of the tone. It could be because of a super weak signal, but 99.9% .9 of the time, it's because the tone isn't correct, or doesn't match, I should say. And so in our example here, what if that repeater sent out a transmission, you have the right frequency, you see the yellow light come on, but you're not hearing something. Well, that tells you probably you have the wrong tone. And what happens often because humans are entering these tones in, right? Is someone just repeated this 103.5 down to here. So instead of 127.3, they put 103.5 down below. You can't hear it. But let's say you see that yellow light, you're interested to know what's coming in on that frequency. You think you should be hearing it. What can you do? You can go into the programming menu under the receive side and set your receive tone to all zeros. Okay. A little bit more time consuming because you've got to go to the menu, the programming menu, go through all that jazz. And with the older radios, you need a, either a cloning cable or a little puck to get into it. Please don't hand jack it. <laughs> the newer radio is much easier to get in there. Uh, there are other ways to do it. You could select monitor. All the radios have a monitor function. You'll just get the annoying open squelch sound, but that sets the receive side to zero. You'll see off hook in the menu selections for radios. Off hook sets your receive tone guard to zero. If you take the remote mic off of a mobile, and that's where that off hook comes from, if you take that off the hook, it sets the receive tones to zero as well. 
So all those different ways you'll be able to hear uh, a transmission on the old style Bendix King handhelds. There's that rotary switch that has CG and squelch on it. All the way to the left, you'll hear a click. That tells you that you're in code guard mode, you've activated the receive code guards. Anything past that click, which is the majority of the spin of that knob, you have set your receive tones to zero. And then as you continue to turn it right, you're just making your radio more and more sensitive to weaker and weaker transmissions. Back in the day when tones weren't used that much, there weren't that many problems with frequencies interacting with each other, that wasn't a half bad idea. Now with the use of tones and especially with the use of similar frequencies in nearby fires or the same fire, you're going to want to make sure you probably have that code guard activated so that you're not getting unwanted traffic. Okay, that was a quick down and dirty on tones. We're going to talk about it more and I'll actually uh, get some video of going through the radios, how to check some of the stuff, how to select it, why you see tones on simplex channels, all that good stuff. But I'm going to try to stick to that five minutes. I blew past it a little bit. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, please send me any questions.